continue keep it clean a very very special video for you because i had the pleasure of sitting down with well really standing up with coach van coach warren coach peanut um who was lamar jackson's longtime qb coach ever since lamar was young um so he was super super cool super super nice super super patient uh we were having times where we had technical difficulties he was chill about it. He wasn't tripping or nothing. Uh, he was just amazing to interview. And I can't even call this an interview. He was just amazing to have a conversation with. Uh, I appreciated hearing all the different stories about how he got introduced to football, uh, his relationship with Lamar Jackson, and just his insight on the game. Because it's always nice when you can learn different things from different people. And there was a lot that I learned when I was speaking to him. Shout out to my guy, Jonathan. Shout out to Coach Dave, who was a part of this as well. Uh, and shout out to all the children that are part of the Elite Academy. But without further ado, because I don't want to keep y'all waiting, because this is really, really good. And he was just amazing. Here goes Coach Van. So we're here at McNair Park in Pompano. I'm here with Coach Van. Van. Coach yeah, Van. Yeah, yeah. Coach Peanut. Um, <laughs> coach uh, Lamar, QB coach for Lamar Jackson for a real long time. Before we even talk about him, um, I wanted to get to know more of a background on you. Uh, how did you even, how did you get introduced to football in the first place? Wow, that's a good, I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Um, I just love watching college football growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite growing up was Turner Gill. And, and I just used to admire the way he ran the option back in the day. Mm -hmm. And through the years, through the years, I um, just college football. And then I started in 92. I started here at the park. Mm -hmm. And from that, um, it just kind of grew. And then the biggest thing was watching the kids grow. Mm -hmm. And the thing that kind of took me back was when they were saying our kids couldn't make it. And I couldn't figure out why. And then everybody would always say, they're mechanics. Uh. I'm like, well, what's wrong with their mechanics? So then I would start watching our white counterparts, watching what they're doing, mm -hmm. and then took that and just said, well, well we can do that. Because I couldn't understand how we could win a national championship in high school, mm -hmm. um, a high school championship, excuse me, a national championship. Um, and then we get up to the pros and then our numbers would just fell off. Mm. Couldn't understand it, but you know, um, I've been here for 30 plus years. Okay. My biggest thing is just giving back to them any way I possibly can. So yeah. that's that's why I'm still doing it. I, I'll say that. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Now, <laughs> something that you talked about uh, with you really watching the option plays in, in college and just wondering why I wasn't transitioning to the pros. What goes into you developing your players' skill sets? I think the number one thing is just uh, when we have to realize, okay, what they're doing on the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, you can be in um, high school or go to college, but if you're not doing the fundamental things, mm -hmm. and that's just a simple three-step drop, five-step drop, seven-step drop, you're not doing those simple things, knowing how to make your reads, when to make your reads, mm -hmm. We're not doing that then. Everything else, anybody can throw a football. I tell anybody, anybody can throw a football. Yeah. You don't get a lineman can throw 60, 70 yards, especially <laughs> if he's 300 pounds, 250. Yeah. He can throw a football. Mm -hmm. But you want consistency and you want to be able to develop. These are some of the things that you're going to have to do on a regular and consistent basis. So. Now, with consistency, <clears throat> uh, along with that comes repetition. Yes, sir. Uh, with, with your development of these young men, um, they're doing a lot of the same stuff over and over and over. Uh, if you have a player that seems like he may be lacking motivation, uh, how, how would you handle that? Uh, I think the biggest thing is letting them know, I have to ask the question, is this something you really want to do? Mm. Okay. Because if this is something you really want to do, you're going to go through all the downfalls mm. first. Because, again, they're already told you can't do it, you can't do it. So now we, we're, we're at the bottom. Now, the only thing we can do is just build ourselves up. Mm. So, again, if they tell you you can't do a three-step drop, listen, we can do it. And I, there's times I had a quarterback, and even I, I had to say that even when I had Lamar, do a three-step drop. But, Coach, I just did it. Yeah, you did it for the last 30 minutes. We didn't throw the football. We didn't do anything else. Just your three-step drop. And that's all we're going to work on. Mm. And it's like, yeah, we're going to keep doing that until they say it. And it's like my biggest thing is when you leave here, 
go to a camp. Because I want that camp to be able to say, hey, man, you need to work on this a little bit more. You need to work on that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And from that, that'll let me know, hey, we're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And that's been the Achilles heel over my years. It's like, we're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. Then when you get in the presence of others, they'll say, hey, man, you look good on that three-step drop. You look good on that five-step drop. You look good on that read. And it's like, I told you. Just... It's a process. Yeah. It's exactly. a process. Just trust the process. Yeah. And, and, and we're trusting the process. Um, sometimes if a, a quarterback may be struggling in whatever the particular area it might be, uh, their confidence can sort of be shaken a bit. Yes. How, um, how, how do you build people's confidence back up if they're having an issue with their confidence? I know it's very similar to motivation, but it's still a bit different. I think one of the biggest things um, over the years, it's, it's like, um, again, back to, are you sure you really want to do this? Because if you really want to do this, then we're going to have to go, sometimes we have to go back to the beginning, as they say. Sometimes we'll start standing up and we're just turning our hips. Sometimes, you know what? Get on the knee. Like, Coach, but I, get on the knee. We're going to go back to the basics. We're going to go back to the very beginning. And then we're going to build our way back up. Now, if you're willing to take this process, we can go as far as you want to go. Because everybody can't make the pros. We know that. Right. Everybody ain't going to be that star in, in college. We know that. But you can be that guy that you say, hey, I want to be the success in, in high school. I want to be have success. Everybody's not going D1, as they say. Right. That's true. It's a tough truth, too. And, and, and so because you're not going to go D1, it's like, hey, listen, I don't think everybody's going to go D1. But I think you can play college football. Mm -hmm. I think you can play high school football. But it's one of those things that, and it's funny, I was just listening to guys uh, talk on the, uh, I think it was Facebook, and they said the two most difficult positions in the National Football League is quarterback and cornerback. Mm -hmm. We wholeheartedly, 100%. And I'm thinking, you have to lead as a quarterback. Right. And you have to have the, my father used to always tell me, and nobody going to want to lead or follow you unless you know how to lead the right way. That's true. That's true. Cause if you uh, if you're shaky, then yeah, people can I, see I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not I'm not following him. Why? Yeah. I had a, one of my kids over here, Nick, when he was a freshman. First thing I told him was, they're not gonna like you. Coach, I ain't do nothing. Else. I know you didn't do anything, but they're not gonna like you. So, well, why? You're a freshman. Mm. What freshman going to a high school? <laughs> they gonna like you? Hey, that's real. Cause I'm thinking, what's up with the sophomores, juniors, and the seniors? Mm. You finna outdo them? And the coach is going to think, y'all finna let a freshman come and not do y'all? What, what y'all got going on? But guess what? You started as a freshman. Yeah. You, took a, you took a beating that most wouldn't, mm. most couldn't, but you did. Yeah. And now you're a sophomore, and you're still the starting quarterback. Mm. That takes, takes a whole lot of heart. Yeah, it does. Now, um, with, with you coaching these young men, um, you're, you spend a lot of time with them. Uh, you're in their lives a lot, so you can sort of become uh, a mentor, or even a father figure for a, a lot of these young men. Talk about that and, and what that means to you. I've, it's funny. It's I've always said I don't think I'm a mentor. I, mm -hmm. said, I got one of my partners that he's coming, Brad. So, coach, you know, you're a good mentor. You've been mentoring both of my sons. Mm -hmm. um, one is at Universal uh, uh, Central Florida, and one just um, his first year going to FAMU. Okay, and Coach, you're a good mentor. You've been a great mentor. And I'm like, nah. He's like, yeah, you don't think so, but you've been that way for many. If you just taught football, mm -hmm. then I would say, oh, yeah, okay, well, he's a good football coach. But you don't just teach football. Mm -hmm. You give us life lessons. Yeah. And you pray with them. The kid, Nick, that I just spoke about, when his dad texted me and said, Nick is getting baptized, mm -hmm. that's because of you. You entered, you you mentioned God in his life. Uh, well, you know, we don't finish our sessions unless we pray. That's how we finish our sessions. But all praises go to him right. at the end of the day. So I, I, don't, I can take credit for being out here on the hot days. And a lot of times <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, yeah, okay. But at the end of the day, it's like, hey, I tell them all, you got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, listen, I can go sit down and I can be good. But you got to put in the work. Yeah. At the end of the day, so if you put in the work, guess what? Eventually, I guarantee you, it's going to pay off. Somebody's going to see you. Yeah. 
They might not see you right now, but somebody's going to see you. And then when they see you, they're going to be like, who is that kid right there? Yeah, I, I agree. Because um, like you mentioned, with football, it's not just football. It's about life lessons. And something like that, we're putting in the work, no matter what it is that you're yes. doing. If you just continue to put in the work, you may not get the recognition right away. You may not get your name out there right away. You may not get all the benefits right away, Facts. but eventually it, it's going to end up working out. Um, Oh, go ahead. No, no. I, I agree with that mm -hmm. 100%. And I think the sad part about now is, and I tell people, I said, have you ever had a home-cooked meal? And they're like, yeah. It's like, okay, so you had a microwave meal. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> which one did you like best? It's like, well, the home-cooked meal. Said, yeah, because the home-cooked meal is going to give you that home-style home gravy. Right. And all those things, that it, it's, it's going to take a couple of hours in the oven. <laughs> So it's gonna take a minute. Yeah. But you can get the microwave meal. Now, and if grandma burnt the cornbread, guess what? She going to go back and cook some more cornbread. Just so that you can have some good cornbread. And yeah. you get that microwave cornbread, you're gonna be like, what is this, that, man? That, that <laughs> it don't taste the same, but you got a meal though. Right? So I just wanna give you a home cooked meal at right. the end of the day. That's that's what that's all. I feel you because this this is a um we want it here and we want it now type of society. Yeah, this this side this society is the mic I call it the microwave society. I want it right now. Give give it to me. It's funny because I've been saying that same exact <laughs> thing, that same exact analogy for years too. So to hear it come from somebody else, I, I appreciate that. With, with Lamar Jackson, how, how did you end up getting connected with him? Uh, Lamar came to the program, I want to say it was 2006, mm -hmm. I want to say 2006, um, and he was on the, back then it was, was weighted, so we were going to go, I, I think he was on the 80 pound, and then one of my coaches, Coach Reggie, came to me and said, Coach Nut, this kid got it, <laughs> like he, he is that, he is that dude, yeah. but he got to work on his mechanics. I'm like, huh? Got to work on the mechanics. So, we came out that Sunday, and I met his mom for the first time, mm -hmm. who I still call mom to this day. That's cool. Um, and we shook hands like we discussed before. And from that till now, we still have communications, yeah. so to speak. So, um, I've, I've just been, I've been thankful. I've been blessed. And the I think the, the best thing about that be humble in the beginning is that he was always humble. Oh, yes. Like, no matter what I said, no matter what I did, I could have told him, do it this way. Mm -hmm. And that's how he did it. Um, and he stuck to that. And, you know, people can say, well, and it's crazy because I had quarterbacks after quarterback after quarterback. Because Reggie, every quarterback he had, he would send to me. Mm -hmm. Lamar's the only one that finished. Oh. <laughs> that's the that's the crazy part about it. He started with eight, all through his little league years, all through his high school years, up until he went off to college. And so it was like, that was the beauty of it. He started, he finished it, and that's this hard work gonna pay off. I know you don't see it now. I, I promise you don't see it. I remember a time when a couple of his old teammates came by, like, man, what you getting ready to do? Like, man, I gotta go work out. They got a convertible down. <laughs> Ready to party. They've been to go to the beach. <laughs> and he's looking like. Like he was missing out. Yeah, you know, like. Yeah. Wait, well, you, you, you can't work out. <laughs> she was adamant about that. When I say she was. Yeah. And back then, like, we're at 3.30 now. Back then it was 2 o'clock. Mm, so even hotter. It was 2 to 6 back then. Oh. Yeah, so it was like, hey, hey. <laughs> You, you, you let, let us get there. And so his grind, his, I'm like, hey, I'm telling you, bro, I, this, this is going to, this going to work for you. Mm -hmm. This is going to pay off for you. I don't know how it's going to pay off for you. Yeah. And so as we can see, yeah, it, it definitely <laughs> did. It, it, it paid off. So by the grace of God, and again, it's his humble beginnings. It's him being humble now. And that's just who he is. It wasn't, some people can pretend. Yeah, you yeah. know that old saying, you're going to pretend easy. for so long. Because mm -hmm. the real you going to come out. Yeah. And you can say, 
is he is, is he really like this? Right. Is it? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's um. And you speaking about his humility? It's funny. I was gonna ask about that because I've got an opportunity to meet him a couple different times um, and talk to him for a little bit. Um, but he through everything. I remember when he was a rookie in, in 2018 in the NFL. I had went up to Ravens training camp. And he just seemed really quiet, kind of reserved, not necessarily shy, but just he, he was just quiet. And, and obviously, as time has went on, he ended up becoming a starter. He's had a lot more experience. He's got a lot more comfortable, outspoken and just really be himself. When you see him on TV, you see the humility. Um, you've seen him have a lot of success on literally you've seen him on, at every level have a lot of success. I have reached a lot of the, the highest of the highs. Um, but. What I tell people is from the times that I've gotten to meet him, he's always the same, always laid back. Even kill. All, Even kill. Yeah. Just, yeah, you don't, you're not going to get, if you get him frustrated, you can best believe you did something personally to his mom, mm. his child, or one of his siblings. Outside of that, it's like a duck. That water is just going to just roll off. Hmm. Uh, that's how, what you think. That's what you think. I, it took me for a minute to fall in love with the NFL again. Oh, really? Yeah, because I had never seen so much criticism oh, okay. towards one young man playing this position. Hmm. I saw with, you know, I'm watching every year. I'm, I'm watching. Um, sometimes I'm loving Warren Moon. You didn't want to give Doug Williams a fair shot and then, you know, first black to Super win Bowl, the, yeah. the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And everything, it was like it was, okay, it's criticism here, criticism there. And then I literally was told, oh, you need to change the position. Mm -hmm. I remember telling him, his mom said, what position you play? Quarterback. If they ever ask you what position you play, you tell them you play quarterback. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't play anything else. Now, if you want to know the truth, he could probably play wide receiver, safety, because his range is like yeah. unbelievable. His speed is well <laughs> speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> he could play these positions. And then the, I think the thing that's so humbling is, you know what? I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. Because I yeah. could talk about it all day. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you. They said he couldn't pass the ball. Okay. Well, um, if you ever remember Pro Day, my partner Josh made sure on his Pro Day, Everything he did was underneath the center. Mm. Because they said he can't do it underneath the center. And I'm frustrated, like, he's been playing center underneath the center since he's been a kid. Mm. We didn't have this four wide spread when we were coming up. Mm. Everything was underneath the center, drop back. But they made it seem like he can't, hey, 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 hey. Don't, don't. <laughs> so, so the frustration came from, y'all keep talking about what he can't do. Mm. And it's like, let him try first. Let him, let him show you what he can do yeah. and what he can't do. And, and from that, then, uh, you know, that, that, that was the frustrating part for me. And that was the first couple of years. And heck, I, I, I just started watching Stephen A. Smith again for uh, after about two or three years. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's still a lot of the same conversations. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Even to this day. What, what's crazy and, like, continues to blow my mind is that he's a first-round draft pick uh, of the Baltimore Ooh. Ravens, a yeah. quarterback. Um, he's a one-time unanimous MVP in the NFL. So on the highest level of football, he, he wins the award for being Only the best Only two people have year. ever done it. Yeah. Tom Brady, Brady. Yeah. Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. And then he was one, one vote away. He was one vote away from um, being a, a two-time um, unanimous MVP. Facts. Um, but there was one person that voted otherwise. Okay, it is what it is. But he's a two-time MVP, and a lot of people don't get that. Um, he's broken countless records in the NFL. He's led the league in touchdown passes. He's been extremely successful, just won a whole lot of games. He got his big contract. He's just he's done so much. But why do you think people, st after everything, that Lamar Jackson has accomplished after everything that he's done, why do you think some people still feel like that's not enough? Because they, uh, there's other quarterbacks that haven't accomplished half of what Lamar Jackson has.
but they get talked about like, okay, they're great, they're this, they're that, they're amazing, but with Lamar Jackson, so many people just feel like it's not good enough. It's, he didn't do the norm. Mm. The norm is you got to do A, B, C, D, and some E and F. Lamar didn't do that. Mm. And because the, there's not a book, but everybody says you got to get an agent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you don't. This, this, we're talking about money. Mm. You can count, I can count. <laughs> I like you that. can read, I can read. So if it comes down to me reading the contract, yeah. me looking at the dollars, it making sense for me and my family, yeah. okay, then, then this is what we're going to do. Mm. I don't need you to do that. Right. Because he didn't do the norm. Mm. Yeah, That's that, why he's criticized the way he's criticized. Yeah. Because... Yeah. If he was, if he, to me, if he would have done everything they've asked of him to do, uh-huh. getting the agent and doing this and doing that. Psh. Listen, the, one of the biggest arguments was he wasn't 6'2". What? Where did y'all get that from? Then I stood next to Baker Mayfield. Mm. He ain't 6'2". <laughs> so what are we talking about? So I'm like, you, you, you're making an argument about... Right. I stood next to Doug Flutie. Mm. Doug, you ain't six two. Mm. So the people that you 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 crit, Doug won a Heisman. Kyler Murray won a Heisman. Oh yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Baker Mayfield Baker. won a Heisman. Mm-hmm. And none of y'all six two. Yeah. How I many of y'all told uh, change your position? Mm. Oh, that's real right there, man. But oh. again. <laughs> You, you didn't do the norm. You didn't go through the alphabet. You didn't go A, B, C. Oh, you got to go D, E, F. You didn't do it. Yeah. So because you didn't do it, now we're going to ridicule you. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and put you down. Yeah. And, and it's unfortunate um, because, yeah, you're right. He didn't do things the, the traditional way. The traditional way. That's, that, that's it. Yes, sir. Yeah. For, with Lamar Jackson, when you watch him, um, especially since you've known him since he was way younger, what are some of the same traits that you see? You talked about his humility. Uh, but maybe either whether it's on or off the football field, what are some of the same traits that you see from Lamar Jackson from when he was younger till now? Work ethic. Mm. Okay. Still work. Still gonna be home. Still gonna go. Still gonna grind. Mm-hmm. Just this week, Lamar's not feeling well. Lamar didn't come to practice Monday and Tuesday. Lamar's gonna push himself to go Wednesday, and then shut it down. Get yourself right. Mm. Go back. Now I'm like, oh, wow, you see what Lamar's doing? <laughs> oh, my goodness, you, you see Lamar? And it's like, he's going to push himself. Yeah. And, unless he's just, I can't go, you know, I, I got to shut it down. Mm. Got to take care of something. Got to take care of that body first. Yeah. His mom used to preach to us. If your core isn't right, everything else going to fail you. But your core has to be right. Mm. You got to eat right. You got to take care of your body. Mm-hmm. But if you don't take care of that body, guess what? It ain't going to take care of you. That's true. That's a good point. I, I told someone, matter of fact, two weeks ago, having a conversation, I said, have you ever seen Lamar put his hands on his knees? And they said. Oh, that's a good point. And they said, I no. About and that. I said, you never will. And they said, why? It's a drill that he used to do. I don't know if he's still doing it, but it's a drill he used to do. And our rule was, Never let them see you tired. Hmm. I don't care what you do, I don't care how you feel it. Never let them see you tired. Man, that's a good point. I, I, I never thought about that before. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, 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 that's crazy too, man. <laughs> that's cool, I like that though. You go, to go, you go back to his college days? Uh-huh. When he was at Louisville? You can go when he was, his first five years in the league? Show me one picture with his hands on his knees. Well, he's bent over with his hands on his knees and he showed you that I'm just exhausted. I'm not saying that it ain't because I haven't seen every game. Mm-hmm. But just show me. Mm-hmm. Show me just show me one picture. And I say, oh, hey, well, that, maybe that one. But so far, nobody's been able to show me. <laughs> I love that. Now, um, you watched him win the Heisman. Yeah. And, I mean, he could have he could have won another one, too. He should have. Yeah. He should have. But how, how was that experience, especially for you, having watched him come up and seeing him been a big part of that, too? 
my niece being born, my nieces, my nephew being born, um, I probably say that's one of the best things that ever happened to me, mm. being invited to that ceremony by him and his mom. Mm. And special. I can't begin to tell you, the, 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 of course the greatest thing was him winning. I don't know if you can see this, but up close, it's a, a digital image. And I, I, I think I love that the most. That, that's, that is extremely bad. Um, and again, we have all the things that just trying to respect. Those are his actual cleats. So we're very thankful for that. Um, and again, we're thankful for the city of Pompano for putting this display on for us. Um, this is just my uh, thank you to the bar uh, that weekend. And it showed us Friday night, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And those were the days and we flew back Tuesday. I was told by Michael Rogier on that Friday, he put his arms around me, he says, ask for whatever you want. Because he don't win, he don't get a bag anyway. So um, I was thankful that he won and I was able to spend um, additional nights in New York. And so that was a blessing. But me, I told you in the very beginning, me being a college head, so now I'm amongst the great collegiate athletes that have played this game. I'm the Archie Griffin. Like, I'm standing next to Archie Griffin. I'm like, this this the two-time? No, nah, you can't. Nah. Billy Sims. Uh, Desmond Howard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ohio State running back. I always forget his name. Um, uh, 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 the running back. I can't. I, I, for whatever reason, his name always slips my mind. Um, Marshall Allen, mm -hmm. Marcus Allen. The running back. Yeah. Um, but just a lot of great athletes. Tim Brown. Mm -hmm. So to see them up close and in person, and then shake their hands, yeah. and then take a picture with a few of them, it's like, wow, this is it, this is unreal. And again. I love the NFL, mm -hmm. but it wasn't nothing like college. It ain't nothing like <laughs> being amongst the great and, and college. Let's go. Yeah. So my thing is um, that that Heisman experience, mm -hmm. and to be there to witness it, and he says something, and I don't know if you ever caught it. He says, "Don't worry about it, Coach P." And people still don't know if he was talking about me or if he was talking about Coach Petrino because I'm sitting right next to Coach Petrino and I'm bawling out. I'm uh -huh. crying like a two-year-old. Yeah. I wipe my face. As I look up at the, the stage, you got the lights beaming on my forehead. So it's like, shh. <laughs> so it's like, and he says, it. Oh, don't worry about it, Coach Pete. I'm like, and again, I'm sitting next to Coach Petrino, and I'm, this is, unless somebody can tell me, but like I say, I'm humble simply because I don't know any other Little League coach being on that stage, mm. ever. I've seen college dads, mm. I've seen college coaches, I've seen high school dads, high school coach, but a Little League coach mm. on that stage at that time, yeah. nah. That um that definitely shows the, the deep respect that uh, he and his mom they they have for you then. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely something to be proud about. Yes. So, extremely. Yeah. That's super super cool. Now fast forward um, a couple years later the draft. Mm, yeah. That experience. Um, how was that? Just watching him get drafted and watching. Frustrating. Mm. Very very frustrating. Um, simply because. You know for a fact he should be number one. Mm. The number one pick, the number one. It, it, <clears throat> excuse me. I know personally um, two teams had came here personally to see him before draft day. Mm. One I knew wasn't going to select him because it made no sense. Okay. It was the Houston, and they had just selected Deshaun the year before. Oh, yeah. So that made no sense. I didn't understand why they were here, but they were here. Mm -hmm. The other one was, 
New England Patriots. Mm. And he visited them twice. Mm. And the crazy part about it was the offensive coordinator personally came down. Uh, you know his name. Um, not McDaniel. Nah. It wasn't McDaniels. Josh. Josh McDaniels. McDaniel. Yes. There we go, Josh. Yeah. Josh personally came down here to visit Lamar. Oh, I know that. Yes. Mm. And the thing with me with Josh was New England had two picks in the first round that year. Mm. So we were sitting here, we were, we were sitting back, we are like, well, I ain't a New England fan, but, you know, if I got to yeah. <laughs> like Tom and then follow by Lamar, well, you know, hey. I'll be a New England fan. <laughs> what? I did what? Yeah. But there was at least seven teams that passed on him that was like, Really? Mm. So the strangest thing about the whole thing was, everybody knows the story, he was 32. Mm -hmm. What everybody doesn't know is that the Eagles were on the phone with Geis, the running back. Oh, there he is, Geis? The running back from, from LSU. LSU. Yeah. They were on the phone. Mm. Look at that. Our table was here, his table was over there. Mm. Uh, Eagles just made a trade back up. I mean, Eagles just traded to Baltimore. Baltimore is now on the clock. Baltimore selects Lamar Jackson. So as humbling, game got to be humble. Mm -hmm. And as patient, you're talking about, I want to say it started at six something, when the draft starts. Yeah, it starts at eight. And that's you're there early though. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to be there for a long time. So when they're with humble beginners in six and eight and from eight to eleven. Yeah, just waiting. <sighs> mm -hmm. and so, so you're looking like, like I know he should go for Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. what, 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 is, what is that about? Uh, uh, Donald, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> what, what, what? What, what draft are we in? Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> so, but yeah, that that's, it, it was just very humbling, but very frustrating mm. um, at the same time, so. Well, it, um, it obviously worked out in both the short and the long term. Well, of course, I, of course. I was just talking to my guy, Jonathan, and um, he brought up a good point that I hadn't even realized that he was the only quarterback from that year selected to make the playoffs, to take his team to the playoffs that season. That's his, yes. All the rookies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, that's... Well, I'll, go, I'll do one even better. Okay. There's only two quarterbacks in that in that class that's still on their team, original team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh Allen. And, yeah. Because Baker Mayfield, he done been around. But he don't, he's on his yeah. third or fourth. And Josh Rosen. The only, I don't even know if he's yeah. still playing. So, um, <laughs> Sam Donald, he went from the Jets to the Vikings to... I he was at he San Francisco at one time. Oh, so, yeah, he done been around. Too. Yeah, he yeah. don't, he don't, he don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just Lamar and Josh Allen. Yeah, that's it. Wow. In that, yeah, in that first round. Mm. That's that's something right there. Now, I don't know if I should say this, but at the end, Jalen was thinking that he was going to come to Jacksonville. Mm. Jalen came and gave him dap at the very end. Jalen was hoping that he came to Jacksonville. He know like, Jalen Ramsey always speaks highly of Lamar Jackson. He thought he was coming to Jacksonville because mm. you got to think Jacksonville was another team that <laughs> needed a quarterback. Yeah. So all the teams that needed a quarterback, uh -huh. that's why I can look at them like now. I'm like, mm. I feel sorry for you, Cleveland. I feel sorry for you. I don't even remember what Jacksonville did in the first round of that draft. Pick some unnecessary. Mm. I remember um, watching the draft live, and um, I thought that New Orleans, the Saints, I thought they were going to get them. Behind Drew Brees. Yeah, and especially the, the, the way that they run their offense. They do a lot of stuff that's unconventional. So I thought that, because they had even traded up. And when they traded up, I was like, oh, man, they're getting ready to take Lamar. But then they drafted uh, Marcus Davenport, the defensive lineman. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. So we still got a little shot. Um, but uh, it, it was just, and I remember at 32, just watching, and like, hmm, okay, Eagles on the clock, what's gonna go down? Then you get an alert, like, okay, Eagles just made a trade. All right, I know it ain't gonna be, nah, it ain't gonna be the Ravens, nah, ain't, ain't no way. But we'll see what happens, we'll see how it works out. And then it was the Ravens, and I'm like, oh, is hey, it? Hey. I said, will, will it be 
Lamar? What? Mm, uh, maybe we'll see. But and um and it was, and it was just uh it was cool to see that because the Ravens like they gave us little inklings here and there, little like uh, hints that they were looking for a quarterback um, that was different, that did stuff differently from a Joe Flacco because they had brought in a RG3, they had tried to sign him. Um, and they even years before, like guys like Troy Smith, who yep. went to uh, Ohio that, State University, yep. they tried him. Met Troy. That, yeah. yeah. Tyrod yeah. Taylor, who yep. was from uh, Virginia, and he, they, they tried him as well. Um, but with those guys, it didn't obviously work out in the long term. But with Lamar Jackson, they, they saw something in him. Uh, I remember one thing that I was nervous about during his rookie year was um, the way that they were using him. Um, I was worried that they may just, because it just seemed kind of gimmicky, because they would bring him in on those. Um, Two those, plays. Those, the, what, yeah, they would bring him in on those. Like a Cordell Stewart. Right. <laughs> so, but I was glad that when they yes. finally got out of that to really, like, showcase Lamar Jackson. And then, of course, the following year after his rookie year, he just tore it up. He, he just went crazy, and, it's, and he's been going crazy ever since. I do one even better. If you go back to Louisville, he wasn't a starting quarterback. He was sharing spots with three people. Mm. Um, that year, his freshman year, the end of his freshman year, he won the game against Kentucky. Mm. Of course, Petrino told him, next year, it's your show. <laughs> next year, he wins the Heisman, so it's like... <laughs> oh, Petrino knew this. Yeah, man. just, hey, just <laughs> put the ball in his hands so you can see his work. Just Right. Y- y- listen, that part-time stuff every now and then going through that, mm. but, nah. Let him go to work. Mm-hmm. He's only going to learn when he sees, I, I made that mistake, I'm, uh, I, I didn't. Okay. No, I could have did this different. Oh, I could have did that different. Mm. He, I, I, it's rare you're going to see him make the same mistake twice. Mm. And that speaks to his uh, to m- muscle memory and also um, his photographic memory, because that's something that we hear about a lot about. <laughs> uh, a story I always tell, which it made me appreciate him uh, even more, was when he first met my son. This was like, f- I think, three years ago after one of his uh, fun day events. Uh, we had met him, and this was like, for my son, he's not big into football, and at the time he was uh, six, um, but the person that he knew on the Ravens was Lamar Jackson. So he met him, and he was like starstruck and whatnot, and he appreciated it. So then, uh, about a year or two later, uh, when me and my guy Nitro, we did an interview with him at the Play Action Soul Food at the restaurant. restaurant. That's okay. Right, we did that, and um, I had FaceTime my wife and, and our son, and I showed Lamar the phone, and he was like, oh, I remember you, you came to the fund day. And I'm like, man, like, how, do you remember how the heck does he remember that? Like, and this dude, <laughs> with he, all these kids, he's right, got yeah, he so yeah. many different people engaging yeah. with so many people all the time. And then even the following year, even, even this year at his event, even as, as a Flowers event, he was there and, and he saw my son Carter. And it was the same thing. He was like, man, you, 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 you got tall, you got big, you must be eating at the restaurant. I'm like, man, how, like, how does he remember him out of all these people? And, and I remember one time when um, Coach John Harbaugh, the Ravens, when he talked about Lamar Jackson's photographic memory. Initially, when he said that, I was thinking like, okay, it might just be Coach Talk just hyping him up or whatever. But then when Lamar did that, I was like, oh, no, that, that's, that's, that's really real. real. That, that's real. Yeah. It's real. Regardless of what people think, it's like, yeah, you can see him this year. And if you, in his humble grace, it's like, okay, I remember you. I remember Dad. Two years from now, you're going to come up and you're going to shake his hands like, Oh, yeah, man, what's up? How you doing? I remember you. Boy, you don't got tall. And you're thinking, how do you remember me? Like, yeah. I don't do that. That's like, the craziest just, thing, man. He can tell you stories when he played Little League football, mm-hmm. like it was yesterday. Oh, really? Like, yeah. What when we played so-and-so, yeah, coach and I did that. <laughs> yeah. We played a football game and, uh, at one of the field. Uh, back then, I had turf. Uh-huh. I t- hold, the whole week, I'm saying, man, this field is hot. Oh, no, coach, I don't play enough football field before. I said, hell, <laughs> this field is hot. I know. I said, "Well, but you didn't play in the daytime. Yeah. You played in the evening time. I know, of course, I'm good. We're in the game. Coach calls a timeout. They grab the water bottle. And instead of him drinking the water, he starts squirting the water in his shoes. Oh, because his feet were burning up. What are you doing? <laughs> Coach, man, my feet, they hot, man. They, <laughs> it's hot. He'll tell you about it to this day. They're like, yeah, man, we play a lot of here, man. I had to pour the water in my shoes that. <laughs> It's like it's something about <sighs> Lamar. What, what I tell people that I, meeting you for the first time, mm-hmm. what I tell Le, about Lamar is, and this is nothing corny. I know it's it's Lamar's a unicorn. <laughs> mm, yeah, they're different, man. <laughs> you know, it, you, 
again, you get people that have won the Heisman. You got people that have won the MVP. And, you know, just two days ago, people, oh, well, Lamar, he's the only two-time uh, MVP that hasn't won a Super Bowl. Is he playing the game by himself? Is he is he calling the plays? Because last I checked, the whole second half they ran the ball six times. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was something. So was that on Lamar? Because we know ain't nobody passing the ball eighty two percent of the time in no games. Mm. But you want to say a guy that y'all say can't pass, but now all of a sudden he's passing the ball eighty two percent of the time in the whole second half, and they only ran the ball six times. Yeah, that that, be, that led the league in Russia, mm-hmm. yeah. not the conference, the, the league in yeah. Russia, but only ran the ball six times second half. Mm-hmm. That didn't make no sense. But, but now that's Lamar's fault. Mm. So coaches ain't gonna take no part in that. Yeah. Now when they were winning, oh boy, boy that tall boy, that tall boy, he doing his thing over there. <laughs> well, he calling them plays, but for Lamar, he, he doing his thing. But hard boy, he he the he the. He the. But the minute y'all fall short. Mm. And cold weather, may I ask, how do you not run the ball? Yeah, yeah, that too. That's what it makes the most sense, eh? But because we didn't win it, now it's Lamar's fault. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, we, and we've been hearing that stuff uh, for the longest throughout the duration of his entire uh, professional career. I'm going to give him two more MVPs before it's all said and done. Oh, two more. Mm. Maybe three, but I'm going to give him two more before it's all said and done. Mm. He's 27. Yeah. And what's crazy about that, too, especially with the first one more so, um, is that there were a lot of games he didn't even finish. <laughs> like, he, he would come out the Not game. Not even close. Yeah. <laughs> he would come out the game, whether it be at the beginning of the second half or late in the third quarter. He didn't even play it. For the first like, yeah. <laughs> like, imagine what his stats would have been if right. they just would have let him finish the game. <laughs> Like, you guys were all by what he did, but you didn't let him finish. Right, yeah, man. So, I, I feel that's like... Why I'm, um, well, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. Two okay, that's, or that's three more say that now, when he's able to finish. Because mm. the year he wins the Super Bowl, don't have to give him MVP. Because mm. he's going to win it one. I don't know if he's going to win it with Derek. But, and, and, and this is the only knock that I have on Baltimore. Why won't you get a true number one? Because I'm going to say this respectfully. Yeah. You drafted Hollywood Brown. Okay, yeah. You had DJ Metcalf and AJ Brown on the same board. Mm-hmm. We already know what they're doing with the league. Yeah, they're doing that thing. We're talking about six something with AJ and 6364 with DJ. <laughs> and me and you both are taller than Hollywood. Mm. Now, Hollywood, he did do his thing with the Ravens, though. But it, it, it would, uh, with, with those guys, they've been doing some different stuff over there, bro. You did your thing because of who you had throwing the ball to you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that helped. I, I, you put Hollywood with Tom Brady. Oh, well. You still gonna look, <laughs> you gonna shine in that, that light. Yeah. You put Hollywood with Lamar Jackson, you gonna shine. Mm. And that's not a knock on Hollywood. Right, right, right. But, and then I, and again, I'm still mad because in that first round with Lamar Jackson, Y'all picked the tight end that y'all ain't even got. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I don't even know where he is now. He, went to he don't even know. The Bengals and the Falcons, I forgot where he is now. He don't know where he at. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, they, uh, it was crazy just seeing, watching everything um, unfold over the years. But at the same time, wow. And I continue to commend him for how he handles that because yes. every yes. single day it's always somebody saying this, that, and the third mm-hmm. about Lamar Jackson. He can't do this. He's not good enough. He hasn't done that yet. It's, it's always something, but he just he keeps it moving and keeps it pushing. It, it has to be. And, and, and again, I'm not a history, history buff, but I watched enough football. And I think John Elway played almost, what, 14 years? Mm, Give or take? But, yeah. Up until your last two years, if you don't win that Super Bowl those last two years, mm. you've been in the same conversation with Jim Kelly. Mm. That's yeah. <laughs> that's that's a really really good point. I think with Peyton, he didn't win his till was it the ninth year or the sixth year? One of those two. But you won that guy in the beginning. Mm. Y'all stopped that. Yeah. Peyton wasn't that. Y'all wanted him to be, mm. but he wasn't. 
I don't think about that enough. That's a really, really good point. Because there's a lot of quarterbacks, yeah, where it, it took them a little minute. It, so. Listen, the the best ones, y'all can talk about them to this day. And I'm not a, and they, everybody says you're crazy, you're not a Miami Dolphin. No. But y'all got Dan Marino on a pedestal high than high. Mm. He ain't never won no <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> Dan has one of the quickest releases in the National Football League history. Mm. I'll give him that. You had the Mark Duper brothers. Duke, the Mark brothers, Clayton and Duper, that he kind of said, I made them. Mm. And then they said, well, if you made us, we'll make another one. Mm. But he never went to the Super Bowl. When he did go to the Super Bowl, he got embarrassed, mm. San Francisco. Mm. Okay, yeah. But never won one. But he's one of the great ones. Yeah. That's a good point, man. Dan Fouts, never won a Super Bowl. Mm. I keep going on now, but yeah. I'm just saying, it's like you, y'all keep making this narrative about who's great on what? Because of what? Right. You talking about a dude at 27? They just said it. He's the youngest to ever do it. Two times MVP, 27. The man would have won two Heismans if y'all weren't being biased. The video game says it. He threw for 3,500, ran for 1,500, but he only won... <laughs> The hide me one time. That make no sense. <laughs> huh? Like you say, a hey, unicorn, man. That's a unicorn. <laughs> Tell me, name somebody else. I'll wait. Just name somebody else. It's crazy, man. But that, but because you're in rare company, you, that's, you, you, you're a unicorn, son. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, looking behind us, yep. um, tell us about your football academy. You oh, man, on? the football academy has been... It's been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to build it now where it's going to be nationally exposed. Oh, okay. So we want to put it on a platform where people from across the nation will be able to come and experience the blue field that mm -hmm. we have here. And I think there's only two. There's Boise. Oh, Boise State. Mm -hmm. And there's here. But you'll be able to come and get the perfect workout here. We can work out on our track. We have a fitness center, but the academy is something that, again, we're trying to build nationwide. So quarterbacks from afar are going to want to say, I got to get to South Florida. It's not the biggest, but it'll get you where you need to be. Of course, we've got a restroom here on the side, water fountains, a yoga room, and, you know, Again, if you come here, Warren's League gonna get you right. <laughs> we're gonna get you right on the football field, we're gonna get you right in the weight room, we're gonna get you right on the track. So yeah, I don't know where right. I don't know what else you want. One what way or another, you're gonna be right. You're gonna be right. So and and, and last thing is inside the building, mm -hmm. when, when we start getting in the classwork stuff, we're gonna have the class work. Now I wanna give you a visual with that. Digital board, mm -hmm. and we decide to run and play, get some goals, and we encourage this. So once we get that, that's going to be that final step. Mm -hmm. That's what's up, Nick. Just, just, just hear that. I, I need somebody to. I need that board. I need that board. And I want to be able to do X and goals, coverages. I need that board, people. We'll make it happen. The academy. Just go. Not just to be in the ambiance of all these great quarterbacks, but hey, listen, you, you got the best of the best down here. I got mm -hmm. the best podcaster down here. I got the best football field down here. And you're going to be amongst the best athletes down here. But Coach so, Dave, can you tell me about your role uh, with the Elite Academy? Well, they you ask me to do, um, you know, I got a lot of experience with quarterbacks and, um, you know, help them get, you know, motivate them to do certain things and teach them what's necessary to be the higher level, um, what's expected for a quarterback, what's also what we expect them to do in them out in the public mm. a lot of people a lot of people just want to play for football that's not it you got to be a leader you got to be a good, have a um, good character uh good grades and a lot of, a lot of kids don't get recruited because of that mm. their social media posts are bad mm. they, they following a lot of people don't know why am i almost going to put you you you're the captain of the ship at quarterback so that's certain things you got to teach them stuff like that now, now something that i heard you say uh when the quarterbacks were over there working um you talked about self-preservation mm -hmm. can you dive more into that what, what that takes to really have that self-preservation as a quarterback well the thing is if you know about it it's 11 guys on the field mm -hmm. 
the quarterback is the only person that everybody trying to hit every time. Uh, every snap, he has the ball first. Well, second, actually, the center has it first. But he's the one get the ball. He's used the focal point of the whole offense. You got to hand the ball off. You got to audible. You got to put everybody in the right spot. He got to get back. A hurt quarterback doesn't help the team. Use your quarter, your starting quarterback, usually much better than your second quarterback or your third. Um, so you, you're trying to get through a whole season. You know, if you're a good team, you want to get the 14, 15 games. Your average team, you get 10 games. But you want to get your quarterback hurt in game one. And you got to go nine games by your starting the quarterback by him doing something he has no business doing. So I, I know the um, the focus here is mainly on quarterbacks, but do y'all have any other positions that you work with as well, Coach Van? Yes, uh, we got defense backs, uh, linemen. Um, we try to cover everything. At least what we will be. I everything. want to introduce first Q Henley, 13 year old at Lions Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick at Cooper City High School, a sophomore. DJ at Deerfield High School, and Adrian Oliver at Blanchley High School. Okay. And Q, what, what position you play? Quarterback. Hey, what's your favorite thing about playing quarterback? Throw a touchdown. Oh, I like that. That's straight up. And what was your name? Nick Dyer. Nick Dyer. What's your position? Quarterback. Oh, you're quarterback too. What's the hardest thing about playing quarterback? Probably being a coach on the field, field general, uh, managing the game. Okay. I like that answer. What position you play? Cornerback. What was your name? DJ McDuffie. What is your favorite thing about trying to lock somebody up? Uh, I get it started from catching the ball. Hey, that's what it is. And what position you play? Corner. And what's your name? Adrian Oliver. Okay. And what's the, the the toughest challenge with you as a cornerback that you face? Tough, like fast receivers. Receivers. Mm. That's okay. Normal. Now you you more of a press corner. You like to be physical, or you like to just run with the receiver? Physical. Um, but our okay. main part okay. is our quarterbacks. Um, again, we're talking about the leaders. Yeah. Not saying that nobody else can be a leader, but we're talking about our leaders. Uh, quarterbacks, you lead. If you lead the right, right way, so we are here with Coach Van and Jeremiah Young, Randy Phillips. The way you go? Swanee University. Swanee University. Okay. How long you been there? I've gone into my senior year. And what position? You play? Quarterback. Quarterback. Okay. And as a quarterback uh, at Swanee University, what are some of the things that Coach Van has taught you that you implement over there? Uh, competing, definitely. Always got to compete. No matter where you are, who you with, who you playing against, always got to compete, always got to get better. So that, that seems like that's a, a common theme here with Coach that he just really challenges you all to get better. Now with um with, with Coach Van, uh, as you were learning under him, what was probably the, the toughest part about working with Coach Van? Oh, uh, the toughest part for me was definitely coming out here on a Sunday and. You know, I live 40 minutes away. Oh. He didn't care. That was not an excuse. <laughs> so I had to be here on time for conditioning. And it's not easy, you know, to come out here and run X amount of, you know, hundreds, twenties, forties, and then touch a ball and throw. So you're already worn down and he still demands perfection. So, you know, it's a lot of mental fatigue, physical fatigue that goes into it, but still demands perfection. So that was probably the toughest part. And how has that helped you transition over there at Swan University? Um, being in shape, always being in shape, you know, fourth quarter, overtime, you know, hands not on knees, not behind your heads, you're ready to go. Okay, I like that. Now, now Randy, sir, you are in high school? Yes, sir. And what, what grade you in? Going to 12th grade. Going to 12th grade. How, how tall are you? 6'7". Six, 6'7". Seven. Six, seven. Wow. And you a quarterback? Yes, sir. So, what have you learned? What, what's some of the traits that Coach Van has taught you as a quarterback? He taught me these last two weeks. He taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. Just stay focused, keep my head up, mm -hmm. and running. Okay. And I know you're gonna be uh, expected to be working with Lamar Jackson. So, like, how does that feel? Like, what's the excitement level on a scale from one to a thousand on you getting ready to work with Lamar Jackson one day in the future? It's very hot. Mm -hmm. Since I was playing, like, playing on the game with him. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So meeting him in person mm -hmm. and being able to work with him, that's a kid's dream, so it feels great. Yeah, because it's, it's nice that you, you're you working with somebody that's worked, seen Lamar and worked with Lamar since he was younger, and you see everything that Lamar Jackson has accomplished. So obviously, Coach Van, he, he taught him something right. Uh, and for him, that same teacher to be teaching you, that, that says a lot about you too. Now, I know um, with you going into your senior year, uh, recruitment is probably heating up right now. Uh, you got any favorites uh, that are different colleges that you're talking to right now? Yes, I have favorites. My two favorites is FIU and mm -hmm. Carolina right now. Okay, okay. And what about those programs really uh, attract you to them? Um, the way they just welcome me like family. Mm -hmm. When I'm 
when I'm at these schools, when they treat me as how the coaches, the plays they run, mm -hmm. I like the plays they run, and they really win the offense. Okay, okay, and, and that's important to be able to be comfortable with the offense and for them to welcome you as family, because as you already know, football, it is family. With the guys that you're on the same team with, y'all gonna be rocking with each other uh, all season long. Now, Coach, uh, what stands out about these two to you? Um, how do you think they've had as much success as they've had? What are some of the reasons why? Jay, um, since he started, his leadership was quiet in the very beginning, very humbled, but he took what we learned here and he took it abroad. And he's been able to, and he's had a diversity of the, talk about some of the negative stuff, but those negative things could have easily just made him say, nah, I don't want to play quarterback. But he didn't let that stop him. And that's the thing that I truly love and respect about him. He's not letting anything stop him. And most importantly, he'll be graduated soon. And that's the most important thing, uh, receiving that degree. And so because of that, I'm extremely proud of him. And this young man, his future is just extremely bright. Um, he realizes the hard work what it's going to take to get to the next level. How plays are. Jay's at the next level. Randy's getting to the next level. But the most important thing he realizes now is it's going to take hard work. It's not going to just be the off-season work. It's going to be the off-season work. Plus, during the season, still working, still grinding to get to the next level. Now, now Jay, how do you, um, how do you balance uh, being a student? Of course, getting ready to graduate and playing football as well. How, how is the balance with that? Well, you know, growing up, I've always played football since I was, you know, in a diaper. So it, no one says athlete, student, it's student athlete. So you got to put yourself on a schedule, hold yourself accountable. You can't just, you know, be up on the game late at night or just hanging out with your friends. So you got to wake up, get your lift in, get your breakfast, study for school, watch film, take care of your body and just got to be on top of yourself and not let yourself slip and hold yourself accountable. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, especially uh, being accountable. Now, now, Randy, um, with you being in high school, uh, I know it's still pretty tough it, having the balance of being, like you said, a student athlete. And that's a really good point no, I, that's, that, that you said about nobody says it's an athlete student, it's a student athlete, so the academics come first. How have you found it uh, when it comes to being a student athlete? Has it been challenging at all to maintain your grades and still be successful on the field? Yes, sir, but you have to push through to be able to play football, you have to have grades. My mother, she stays on top of my grades. She pushes me to be better. Just to keep your grades in the classroom, and you'll be able to take great ones. Okay, sounds good, man. Well, it was nice talking to both of y'all. Appreciate you, Jay. We appreciate you, Randy, man. You got a weak quarterback? Mm, uh, you can pretty much tell you, uh, this is actually your football team. I hate to yeah. say it that way, but, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, you want that guy to lead them. You know, you want them to say, I want to follow him. I'll block for him. I'm going to run for him. I'm going to do what I can for him. And it ain't just ain't him, it's the team, but they're going to do, he's that leader. He's that guy. Right now with, um, with leadership, because there's some people that are natural born leaders and there are other people that have to really grow into that role. For somebody who may be struggling uh, with leadership, uh, Coach Dave, how would you help them get to where they need to be as a leader to, to sort of develop them as, into more of a leader? Well, the first thing, they, gotta, they understand what their role is and what we're trying to do schematically. That's about scheme and stuff too. Like, okay, we might be a more of a running team. So if you're more of a running team, we don't need a lot of great throwing from them. We need a lot of putting us in the right play. Don't, no turnovers, no false starts, and different things like that. So you got to say, look, we're not asking you to win games for us, not lose these games. You know, make sure people are accountable. Make sure your linemen know who the, who the mic is. We're going to block and different stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to do with um, at the quarterback. Explain to them, this is what we need you to do. This is your role. You got to treat him like he's um, like a, almost like a teacher student in class. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is um, one plus one is two. Before we talk about five times five, you gotta stay one two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they gotta stand wide. Then once they understand it really well, they become more of a leader. Mm -hmm. But they'll just jump out there, hey, go run this, run an 18 yard comeback. Oh, that ain't gonna work. He can't throw a slant yet. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what a lot of people have a tendency to do. I'm gonna run my plays, but I don't really fit this kid, and this kid didn't feel bad. He gonna make it. He gonna stay in the tank, and then the whole team gonna just mm -hmm. implode on you. That's that's a big issue. Okay. And just sort of to, to backtrack, so people can get a background on you. How did you get into coaching? Um. 
honestly, I got into coaching because I played arena football. I wanted to, when I played, I played pro football. Then it got cut. I ain't Jerry Rice. So, you know, I ain't Michael Jordan, nothing like that. So I was a guy, but I wasn't a guy. If that made sense, they, it, was, it, was, it was dudes and it was me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was some guy. I could play, but it was some dudes. Yeah. And um, so I got into coaching. My old high school coach told me to come back because I played arena football. Mm-hmm. Arena football, we played, we didn't play in the fall. So he was like, look, um, come help us coach here. And I got into coach, I started really liking it. And then, um, then of course, I go play my season in the spring, doing spring football, that's when we play. So I played eight years doing that. So I got into coaching, I was young, and learning new stuff on the arena side. Yeah. And like some guys, you you know, probably seen the league, and I've been on head coaches, like seven head coaches were running arena coaches, like me, in the NFL. I've been on the, Gr- the Grudens and all them, those are all arena coaches. Well, they, they, a lot of people didn't know that. A lot of people know the Gruden guys were arena. Uh, even um, even Kiffin them guys part of that. So a lot of people don't know that. So a lot of you no, know, there's a lot of things in that. But um, that's how I got into coaching, and I enjoyed it. So I really enjoyed that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and Coach Van, what would be your favorite attribute about Coach Dave and having him along here with you? His knowledge. Mm. I mean, people can talk about football and where they come from and what they did, but his knowledge of the game and how he teaches. Mm. He does that, you know, off rip. See something, he can adapt to it, he can change it, and people respond to it. So his teaching of the game and his respect for the game. Some, a lot of people can play the game, they got respect for it. This is a dangerous and violent game. And they can tell you that, hey, you can play this, but hey, this, you do it the wrong way, you're going to get hurt, son. So this his, his teaching and what he brings to the game. And him not just teaching them, teaching me. You know, it's like this is this is never. Oh, I know everything. If you know everything, son, you might not want to play football no more, because you might want to be sitting in the bleachers and learn. Because this is a learning game while you're on this football field. So I'm always willing to learn from somebody like Coach Dave. Okay, I, I like that. Now, on um, we're teaching the the kids and teaching these young men. How do you really connect with them? Because with some kids, it could be super easy. With other kids, it may be a bit more challenging, but how do you really connect with them so whatever they can really take on whatever it is that you're trying to help them learn? Consistency. I think, I will tell you, I've had, I think one of my weaknesses as a coach is um, I'm not a big recruiting. I'm not into recruiting like that. So I, I don't mind recruiting a little bit, but I really just, into, I'm a coach who I got, boom. But it's consistent. This work, these are our rules. Rules come first. This is what we're going to do. Hey. Four o'clock time meeting. Hey, it's not four or one, it's not four or two. I don't care about your car broke down, I don't care about your mama being sick. My mama might be sick. I don't have no understanding for that. And it's always it's not I'm not gonna treat this kid better than this other kid. A lot of, that's a lot of that going on. Okay, he can he could come in late, but Ray Ray can't come in late. No, that ain't how that works. You know, he gonna run too. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing, you gotta be consistent. Once kids know that you you're hard on them, but you also gotta tell them when you're doing good. A lot of people don't do that. They like, okay, you're bad, you suck, you sit nothing, but like, you never said this kid threw four touchdowns, coach. But you get better, you're right. But so four touchdowns that ain't in a bad day. <laughs> you know, that's not a bad day in the office, you know what I'm saying? Like, or or we had a situation, okay, why 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 you take a delay a game? Yeah, but I, I got confused. Okay. Then you throw an interception. <laughs> so that's how, like, so people don't talk about that. The whole um being consistent and they think you're mean to them. You always being upset, but I'm talking about the same exact thing. I'm upset by the same exact thing. The coach said, get my cones. The coach said, he got something he want this kid to do at 3.30. And that kid ain't did his 3.45. We got a misunderstanding. That means 15 minutes on, the, on the, what we need to be doing. And that's the thing that I think most kids, they want. They say they don't, they want structure. If you don't give kids structure, you don't have them. Even parents want the structure. Most of the parents act like they don't, they need structure. Hey, your kid can't come here late. I don't care how good your kid is. You might want to take him up the road. And so that's 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 what they're missing right now. That's my opinion. Okay. Mm-hmm. You wanted to touch on that, Coach Vin? Uh, I back up what Coach Dave said 100. percent And I think most people, and I think we talked about it earlier, most people want the microwave effect. I want it right now. It's like, son, you had one workout. Mom, he had one workout. He's not gonna be a star tomorrow. Yeah. He's got to go through the process. Mm-hmm. Once he's done with the process. Then we can see where we're at. So we, our, our job is to get you to the next level. Mm-hmm. Somebody D1, somebody D2, somebody D3. Our job is to get you to the next level. Mm-hmm. 
but it's gonna take your work. Right. It's gonna be our voice, but it's gonna take your work to get you there. So. And speaking of the next level, uh, you have a son that's a quarterback uh, at Ole Miss, Austin Simmons. Tell us about him and just his his journey to get where he is um, now. Well, he play all, no, Austin played quarterback in baseball at Ole Miss. Um, he's different, and um, I think he's special because he dealt with me. I'm not easy. Um, I'm not an easy parent at all, not a little bit. I mean, I was hard on the fun, like you say, accountability. The grades were actually more important than if he had a 5.4 GPA. So he graduated with an AA degree in 10th grade. So, so that's why we left early. We left two years early. Uh, people thought, you know, he shouldn't do that, shouldn't play well. He started in spring. You know, he was 17 years old in college. Um, he'll graduate in December at 18 years old with a bachelor's degree. So that was, that was actually force fed. That's no kid come out of the womb want to do that. <laughs> uh, everybody talk, he's got, he just got it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no he, got, he, he got to understand do what we tell him to do. You know, we got the family members did a lot of good things with him. We got some, um, you know, I was the architect of a lot of that stuff, but it's still a blessing. My mom prayed for him. You know, everybody prayed for him. And I had people around him that I only let certain people be around him. And, um, and you know, and, but he's good, man. Like, I think with sacrifices that I know I made sacrifice coaching-wise, but I saw the potential in him. I don't see a point having children and just throw them to the wolves and say, like, okay, man, he's not, well, he don't got it. Like, well, you know, don't have him. Mm. You know, a lot of guys have children and they're gonna, I'm gonna take my $30,000 of your job. And like, well, let me go get my, let my kid be straight so he can have a seven figure income. Mm. So that's just, I chose that instead. Mm. Um, but, you know, he's doing a good job. Like, and he still do silly stuff. Trust me, he ain't perfect. <laughs> you know, people think, oh, he got a perfect kid. Yeah, no, he ain't perfect. Yeah. That's work, that's prayer. That's some discipline, a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. um, but he picks up on the football side. I'm sorry, on the football side, he was special. Like that mm -hmm. dude knew the plays better than you, mm -hmm. uh, to the point that I think that his nickname was Black Peyton Manning. That's what they <laughs> called him in high school. And that like I'm like, was Jackie, it was to the point it was aggravating. Mm -hmm. He changed the play so much. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> I like you're like, well, I saw this. I said, listen, man, you ready to pay one more time? I'm gonna hit you right in the throat. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hit you in the throat and call him change the play no more. I had to give him a signal not to change the play. And, but it, worked, it helped him when he got up to Mississippi. Then he got with Lane, guys like Lane Kiffin, mm -hmm. Charlie Weiss, those type of guys. And they were like, damn, he's kind of smart. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, he's smart. He's literally very smart. I think he ain't got arm talent, but he's like, law is very smart. And now he's just got to just, you know, keep he healthy, pray stay healthy, and then the sky's the limit for him. He'll be fine. And do you see him coming to be part of this uh, elite? Well, yeah, academy? I mean, it's gonna be it'll be easier, um, much easier for him. The biggest problem with Austin is he played baseball. Oh, so he's busy. So mm -hmm. like he supposed to came when we had the problem with the glitch. I think I told you, but um, mm -hmm. he would have been here. But the issue was also is like as soon as the baseballs like when he left last year, I dropped him off to Mississippi. I think right after the Fourth of July, or right before right after the Fourth of July, Austin didn't get back to sleep in his bed to January first. Then he's, he never got home. Cause now you're talking about division one. Now you got bowl games. Uh, our bowl game was the 30th of December, the Peach Bowl. Mm -hmm. So they left the 31st and drove from Atlanta to Miami. And then like four days later, the first day, two days later, the head baseball coach was like, I was supposed to be back. I'm like, coach, you gave him 30 days off for the baseball team. Yeah, but cool, but we got baseball now. Mm -hmm. So now he went home for three days and they drive right back and play baseball, play the baseball season. Then he practiced the baseball. He practiced spring football and played a baseball game the same day. So it's like, but that's been his whole life though. There's nothing new, but it's gonna be easier when he graduates because the, the, the course load down. You, know, you don't have to play like one class, you know, for, for grad school compared to picking five or six. It should be much easier for him. Okay. Okay. So I hope he continues to do well, man. I mean, it sounds like he, yeah, it sounds like he got a real, real good uh, foundation because uh, that's where everything starts with a good foundation. Hey, Amen. Yeah, now, um, what would you say, uh, Coach Van, uh, that you are, if somebody wants to be a part of this academy, what do they need to bring to the table? What should they come here with if they're looking to be part of this elite academy? A drive to want to be better. Because uh, as you can see, bringing Coach Dave aboard, there ain't no people on board that's gonna say, hey, we wanna hold your hand. They're going to push you. They're going to wish to get, to get the best out of you. So if you come here with that, I'm a star attitude, 
might not, this might not be the place for it. Now, we're going to develop stars when it's all said and done. But if you come here thinking, oh, I ain't got to do that, no, this ain't the place for you. Because everybody got to run. The best of the best, all of them, from the smallest to the top, you, you got to run. Don't, don't think you can't jump over that. You don't have to run that, and you ain't got to throw that. No, you do. Yep. You got to do that. So bringing Coach Dave aboard and, and, and all the people that we're going to have that support, making the academy special, don't think that you going to be, oh, I'm, I'm exempt from it because I'm, no, you're not. And that's what we're going to bring. Just bring, hey, bring your A game. And if you don't have an A game, it's our job to help you Because they all said after they uh, left, hey, Coach, I wish we could have played on something like that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but if Mama didn't play on this field growing up, it was running, actually going east and west when they played back in the day. But now we're blessed with the new facility. And again, I gotta thank the city of Pompano because they're pouring into it. And technically, I don't know how true it is, but technically, there's only two blue, blue football fields in the country. That's Boise and the Pompano County. I say they did everything top notch. Somebody said, well, coach, how do you feel about the football field? I said, from Pensacola, Florida to Homestead, we got one of the best facilities in the state. And I said, I ain't bragging when it's true. <laughs> I said, just look at it, man. You tell me if it ain't nice. So they're like, yeah, yeah, you do it. Got a blue basketball court. Oh, the court's blue too. The court's blue too. We were trying to get a blue playground, but, you know. Almost. And we came close. We came close. But we're thankful. We're very thankful. Um, again, we want to, I keep saying it, but you got to thank the ones that are, went above budget, went over and beyond. I got to thank the city of Pompano. Um, I think um, the Marfa always showing love for a city. Um, so, I gotta thank Lamar and his family because you know it's a it's a it's a family. You getting the best of all worlds. You getting the turf. You getting the fitness center. And now you getting the Pompano Academy. You getting the track. Yeah, you getting the track. You getting the track. Yes, we got an eight lane track. And it's Bluetooth. And it's Bluetooth. <laughs> and it's Bluetooth. Oh, so man. you got an eight lane track that. It's the, I'm not gonna say it's the only blue one in the world, but it matches our field. Yeah. So, and, and then if, if, if you feel comfortable on the grass, we even got grass field for you. There you go, man. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. You got grass, you got two football fields. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got the best of both worlds. And, and I gotta give a quick shout out to our girls and boys at Running Sports. They're at the Junior Olympics right now. Mm. And they had just finished nationals about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And our nine and 10 year old girls just set another record for the 10 year or nine year, if I'm not mistaken which one. Um, the record was 54 and they think they ran a 53-8. But the same girls won Junior Olympics last year, nine and under, and they set a record there. Oh, so they're just breaking records all They're just breaking records, yeah. man. I'm just like, stay tuned because the ones the leaders going to be on the map. Running the sports is already on the map. Yeah. So stay tuned. It's, it's on coming. The way. It's on the way. What's the story Trust uh, me. behind these jerseys? Well, this is replicas, but this is a replica of his own jersey. They're trying to get a picture in there. Um, and this is a replica of his draft jersey, which you know you can only get a number one if you're in the first round. They don't give it to you second or third. They only give it to you in the first round, so hey, that's true. being that uh, we've been blessed to be able to put them up, so we just want to put them on display to let everybody see them, and uh, thankful, I try to get better pictures, but to represent them, but those are the ones we're able to get not on display, so. Yeah, those, those are just fine, and with that, that number one, like, nobody can ever take that from No, nobody right. can ever, like, He's a first round draft. First round draft, that's what that is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's special. I like those frames too. 
And once again, I got to thank the city of Pumper and the city of Pumper that bought the frames, put everything together. Thanks to, to Mr. Gerald Smith, and then he put this together. We put the jerseys in there and the pictures. And as they said, thank you for this display. And everything else is just a bonus. Any pictures, any trophies, any accolades, everything is just a bonus. So I'm just thankful, as they said, to be a part of this journey. And hey, man. This is it. Yeah. I'm sure you got more bonuses on the way then too. Well, listen, if you got two uh, MVPs, I told you before, I'm looking at two or three more mm -hmm. to be added to that man. But I think the one he wants the most is a Super Bowl. Right. Everything else is, okay, it's good to have. Congratulations, this, that, the other. But Lamar wants a Super Bowl. So if he gets a Super Bowl, we'll be there. What, what, what do you think it is because South Florida just produces some of the best of the best talent in football. Yes. What do you think it is that's just, it's just different? I'm going to tell you what a guy said in, uh, I see it on Facebook. It's in the water. Oh, there you go, man. You heard, you heard it there first from Coach Van. It's in the water. It's man. in the water. I, that's it. I can't, I, listen, I, I, I from, from Tallahassee, Pensacola, Florida, mm -hmm. down to Homestead. And Homestead is the furthest south city. Pensacola is the furthest north city, um, but we produce talent from top to bottom, mm -hmm. and you just look at it. Yeah. I mean, and people say, "Oh, well, they're just no." You got Derrick Henry is from Florida. From Florida too, yeah. Emmett Smith <laughs> went to from Florida. Florida you know, <laughs> it, it's, you just got talent on top. Uh, what's the one that they? I, I still I think he just didn't get a fair shot. Um, Tim Tebow. Oh, Tebow. From Florida. He is, yeah. In Dakota, yeah. You, you, you got your Hollywoods and you got your Lamar Jacksons and you got. Uh, uh, it's we are, we're a hotbed when it comes to talent. Mm -hmm. Vince Wolfork from Florida. Yeah, another one. Yeah. So I, again, I Fred Taylor. I, I can run out of names. Yeah, Ray Lewis. Um, Ray, it's John like Taylor, uh, yeah. it, you, you run Lewis. out of names when mm -hmm. you start talking about Florida, but it's like it's Florida. Yeah. <laughs> and when people say, well, what is it? Listen, our food, our ham hocks and our oxtails ain't no different in here in Mississippi and Texas. And it's our water, I believe, you know. Okay. So let's chalk it up to the water then. Well, yeah, Coach, we're going to chop it up to the water. Coach Van, I appreciate you. Hey, man, man. thank you so much, man. For real. I appreciate hey, talking to you. This, hey, listen, I hope this won't be our last time. Oh, no, for sure it won't be, man. I, it, was, it was a pleasure. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your patience, too. I appreciate you do. going over everything about yourself, about Lamar Jackson, and then just about all of this, too, and the kids, man. So I appreciate what it is that you do. I appreciate the impact that you have on these young gentlemen's lives because it's a game changer. As you know, it ain't always easy. No, oh, God, no. Especially nowadays. I feel like nowadays it's more pressure put on young ones more than ever. Yes. So for them yes. to have an out like a positive out like this and you to be the biggest part of that, I appreciate you. I got one more thing I got to add, mm -hmm. if I can. Oh, um, for sure. We talk about the academy, but I have to mention my Super 8. Okay. And my Super 8 is the one thing that we kind of developed when we had Lamar in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. and it was me and his mom. And we call it our Super 8 to this day. It is put God first. Mm -hmm. Prayer, faith, family, education, mm -hmm. sacrifice, character, discipline. Okay. That's our Super 8. Mm. And I tell all my kids like at that. times, put it in front of somebody. If you think it's real, you think, put it in front of somebody. And see what they tell you at the end of the day. Mm. And so because of that, it's one of those things that I kind of like live by. It's one of those things I, I tell all the kids. One, like I got a couple of new ones here today. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Because it's new, I got to be able to explain it to you. Right. And I say, if you apply this to your everyday living, mm -hmm. this is going to make you a better person. And then you will be the ultimate teammate. Mm -hmm. That's real right there, man. So I just want to make sure I put that out. Oh, for sure. Um, so everybody knows that I'm, I'm a true believer at Warren's Elite Academy, mm -hmm. but my Super 8 is that thing that we just, we stress home to all of our young men. Because this is going to help you be a young man, because you can be a great football player. Right. And you can be the elite player when it comes like to Lamar. But you can be an excellent man. Right. In society. Mm -hmm. Just apply this. Just, just put this in your life, and I think you'll be on your way. Perfect, man. Well said, man. Thanks, Appreciate sir. Appreciate you a lot. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yep. That was cool, man. That was great.